Yeah. No, I'm still fine. I was wondering, have you, yeah, have you posed a lot of questions to a lot of Jewish students as to what they determine is anti-Semitic? Like, was the 2005 withdrawal from Gaza by Israel anti-Semitic? Was the destruction of synagogues and grabbing Jews out of Gaza, was that anti-Semitic? And I think, like, asking specific questions would be really fascinating to see what people's response would be to all these questions. Like, is criticism of Israel not having trials by jury or written constitution, is mentioning that anti-Semitic? I think those would be really, really cool things to study, you know? Um, like individual questions, because like what constitutes in the mind of American Jewish students anti-Semitism? Yes, so we have asked some questions about do you consider X anti-Semitic, do you consider Y anti-Semitic? In general, students differentiate between criticism of Israel and uh, stating that Israel doesn't have a right to exist or that Israel's existence is somehow racist. Right, so they do draw a clear line there. Um, we haven't asked about that specifically. Um, but yes, in general, students don't consider criticism of anti Israel, uh, criticism of Israel in and of itself to be anti Semitism. Is there anybody who didn't get? Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Hi, um, I, I'm going along with his question about the difference between Hillel and um, your numbers. The mm -hmm. question is, I mean, I don't, I don't understand talking to the registrar. How do they give you the numbers that you got, number one? And number two, when you do a survey, I wondered how many people you were surveying. And it's interesting, because not everybody answers surveys. And so do you, are you taking that sort of maybe bias that's one way or another <coughs> into account when you do these surveys? Yeah, so let me tell you a little bit more about the methodology. So basically what we do is we get a list from the registrar of all of the undergraduate students with their contact information um, and some basic demographic information that the university collects, which includes whether they are or are not an international student, um, race, and gender, um, class year, right? We take a straight up random sample of all of those students. So, right, so if you're talking about US and you've got whatever it is, 40,000, so we take a random sample of generally about 2,000, 2,500 students. Um, we invite all of those students to take the survey via email. We offer them a guaranteed incentive of a $10 Amazon.com gift card code um, if they complete the survey. That's key. Um, <laughs> turns out students will do a lot for $10. Um, so our surveys actually have uh, high response rates, usually above 50%, um, because they have a guaranteed incentive. That's also why they're expensive to do. Um, in contrast, if you look at national surveys done like by the Pew Research Center in Washington or the Gallup polls, they're usually hovering more around 7-8% as a response rate. So the response rates we're getting are high. Um, in terms of whether the people who respond are different from the people who don't, so we can figure that out a little bit because we know something about them to start with, right? There are always more women than men. Women are more likely to respond to surveys than men. Women are more cooperative than men in general. That's always true. So we do something called weighting, which means that so let's say every woman in the survey only counts as like, you know, 0.85 and every man is going to like count as like 1.15 because they're underrepresented, right? I know it sounds terrible, right? But that's what weighting does to kind of account for that. Um, but in terms of proportion of international students, racial composition, class year, we're spot on. So I'm, I'm confident that, that what we have is representative of the student body. So then in that survey, you ask whether they're Jewish or not at that point? That's how you're We ask in the it. survey. So we don't just ask, are you Jewish? Um, first, we ask everybody for uh, what is your religion, if any. Um, and then we also ask people who say, regardless of what religion they say they are. If they say they're Jewish, OK. If they say anything else, including like none, we say, aside from religion, do you consider yourself Jewish? No, yes, partly, or yes. And we also ask everybody um, about their parents and whether any of their parents were Jewish, right? So that way, we're capturing the students who identify themselves as Jews by religion, but also those who say, I don't have a religion, I'm atheist, I'm agnostic, but aside from religion, I'm Jewish. Or I don't really think of myself as Jewish at all, but one of my parents was, right? So we know kind of that whole spectrum. Yeah. Have you ever done um, like any studies from colleges that probably are not Jew, like have no Jews, like let's say University of Wyoming, or just to Great see question. like 
would those people say anti-Semitic things? Would it never come to their mind? Or, you know, it's just like this Great question. Like, no, these are really off. expensive studies, and people tend not to be willing to spend the money to learn about places where there are not enough Jews. Okay, just to see if like, it's being part of their mind. So I'm looking at the recorder and seeing that I've been up here for about an hour and 15 minutes, and I don't want to keep people in their seats. This gentleman has a question. He's been trying to park the time right there. Stay, stay, stay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. To begin with, 80 years ago, mm -hmm. anti-Semitism was quite overt. Mm -hmm. Today, in comparison, it's nothing, number one. Number two, I want to hear Ben Shapiro. He was speaking at UWM. And the response he received was unbelievable. They had seats for 850 people. Over 1,000 people showed up. Okay. As far as Israel is concerned, most people appreciate what Israel has done in the very short time that they are, that they are in existence. And Israel being around is a definite plus mm -hmm. as far as shooting. Thank you for the broad perspective. I think that's a good note for me to kind of wrap up the formal piece. I know people have places to go. I'm happy to stay if people have more questions and you want to come up and answer, but I also want to make sure that people get to go where they're going on time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.